got a problem, got a need, is your mind in confusion, got something to fix, looking for a solution. Got to find what we need, got to go investigate it, think it out, go design, get ready to create it. Problem is solved. This solution is best. Go and get up and go, go take no bastards. Yeah, yeah. Go take no bastards. What up, and a big what's up to all you texters chilling all around Zanzi. Oh, welcome to the workshop, and like always, this is the show where. Now, as always, I am hanging out with two cool assistant friends of mine. Guys, say what's up. Hi, guys. My name is Francis, and I'm from Hildish Primary. Hi, guys. My name is Aspile, and I'm also from Hildish Primary. Yep. Now, the word on our streets is all about structures. Well, in case you haven't been tuning in, well, we've been working the techno process with the kids who live downtown in Hildish. Our mission is to build an adventure playground to help Niseho keep kids at his mom's playroom happy and active. We want to make a safe place where they can have fun and play all sorts of games. So we've started on building some structures for everyone to play with and have lots of fun. Now Mr. Kumeto was kind enough to donate some boxes for us to get started on. Now I'm sure if you guys have been following the show, you'll know that we've been trying to find ways on making Mr. Kumeto's boxes stronger. Remember this? So have we succeeded, guys? Yes! Look, it's even strong enough for me to climb on it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oops! But I thought laminated objects were meant to be stronger. I think I was just too heavy. You both right. But now you see the problem with this box is that it is open on the one side, which means that it is not supported by all sides. Although a well-made box structure is a strong structure, these boxes are made to contain things, not to support things. Now there's a squashing force called compression, which is too great for the box so the box gets squashed in. Compression. A squashing force. Compression. A squashing force. So when I sat on the box, the compression was how heavy I am. That is right. It was your weight. It's a forced compression pushing down on the box and it squashed it. Well, it squashed it in because the box wasn't strong enough to support you. Why? Well, look at the structures of that box. Because one side of the box was missing, the other side started to sag. They could no longer support your weight, but a well-made box has great strength because box construction is used in the design of a whole lot of heavily loaded structures to make a strong, hollow shell. Now, let's look at some other structures designed to resist this pushing and squashing force called compression. Wow. Oh, hello guys. Are you guys ready for a trip around town to examine structures that are made to resist a squashing force? Well, come with me. Take a look at this bridge. It must really be a strong structure. Bridges are constructed to resist the squashing force of all those cars and trucks driving over it all day. Now, what's holding it up? Hmm, pillars. Well, interesting. The motor car bodies themselves are structures, and so are ships. Buildings and houses are structures and can look just like a box with a roof on it. So how can we make our boxes stronger, just like these structures? Well, if you remember last time, we used the process of lamination. But because we aren't only going to contain things, but also use the boxes for support, we have another method for making the boxes stronger. We can make a halving joint to support and strengthen the sides of the box. So what's a halving joint, you might be asking? Well, take a look at where those two roads meet. That is called an intersection. Now, while you think about that, let's check out our other techno buster as she takes us through the process on how to make a halving joint. Halving joint. 
Hey, you texters, got something to fix? Need to find a solution? You've come to the right place. Let's make ourselves a halving joint. Here's what you do. First, you will need two pieces of cardboard, which are the same size as the sides of the box. As you can see, the box I have is a square one, which means all the sides are the same size. First, you must measure half the length of one side of your piece of cardboard. Then measure the same distance on the opposite side. Using your pencil and ruler, join the halfway marks. This will give you the center point on each piece of cardboard. Using a pair of scissors, cut to the center where the lines intersect on one side of the one piece. And do the same on the other piece. Intersection. Intersection. It's where two or more lines cross. That's the same as where two roads cross at a traffic light. Halving joint. Wow! You should now have two pieces which you fit one into the other so that you form a strong and stable cross. Put these pieces inside your box to make it stronger. Well, there it is. And now when we push against our box, it doesn't collapse. Good job, guys. Well, we're going to have to evaluate or test what we've done according to these requirements. First up, we need to see if the box is strong enough to sit on. Then we're going to have to see which side is the strongest. And how does it compare to the box before the halving joint? It is difficult to break a box by pulling or twisting it because the walls resist tension. Now, the halving joint makes the box even stronger because it fits against all four sides, giving the structure even more support. It's strong and now you can feel. Absolutely. But now another way of doing it is getting rolls of paper or cardboard, taping them up, sticking them inside until the whole box is filled with tubes. Now the tubes of paper support the inside of the box in the same way that a pillar supports a veranda or bridge. Now this shows that the tubes are strong structures. Well, one of our techno busters took to the streets to go speak with the kids to find out if they had any ideas of ways that we can use these boxes that we make. We can use boxes for sitting on and for a table. I've used halving joints to strengthen my chairs. In my design, I've used a lot of boxes that are different sizes, so they can be used for climbing. I've also used pillars for support in my boxes. My design is of a little bin to keep the place tidy. I'm going to laminate it and then varnish it because it only needs to contain and not support. I want to make a hidey hole, but I'm not sure how. So the way we want to design or construct our boxes will be according to what we want to use them for. Now, let's cross over to one of our techno buses who's at the playground. You'll remember from the last time that we designed a car and a house from big boxes. Here they are proving to be very popular. Great idea, guys. Let's see how we'll put together these new ideas. Let's take, for example, the hidey hole. The purpose of the hidey hole is to hide, right? So we can't put the hole at the top. Otherwise, people will see you. We'll have to put it at the side. Remember, its purpose is to hide. So the next thing is to have a box that everyone can sit on. The most important thing about this box is that it must be comfortable for everyone. We don't want it too big so that their feet dangle in the air and we don't want it too small so that it's uncomfortable. So, you can model it around a chair that you know is comfortable. Here's a chair that's perfect for little children. But first we'll have to find out the measurement from the seat to the floor. Then we'll find ourselves a box that's the same height as the chair. But remember to use halving joints or rolled up paper tubes to make the box stronger because we're going to be sitting on it. And it has to be strong enough for a big person to sit on too, but not too big. Then of course some of you guys are going to want to use the boxes to climb on. You can use the same idea as the box to sit on, but you can make them different sizes. Stack them on top of each other, put balancing beams between them, and a whole lot of other ways that you guys can think of. I like the idea of the litter bin very much because it highlights the importance of keeping the environment clean. You can make your litter bin fun, funky, to match the colors of the playground. Okay then, let's get cracking. 
Well, I think we are well on our way and making a great adventure playground. Do you guys agree? Yeah. <laughs> but now, before we close up, I have to share this little surprise letter that was sent in by one of our viewers earlier on. And it goes a little something like this. Hi, Technobesters. I love your show very much. Technology, you rock, yeah. Anyways, my name is Giribone and I live near Hilditch. I was watching your show and that you guys are trying to help the kids in Hilditch. I told my uncle and I asked him if he can help you. See, he owns a company that works with Timber. So I thought maybe he could give you guys some plugs. He said yes. Mm -hmm. He said he will make a donation of some plugs. He said there's a whole lot of things that we can do with it if we think hard. I hope the planks will be enough. Okay, well, I have to go right now. Goodbye. Yeah, we get planks. We get planks. Yep, yep. Now, well, you know what, Kiribone? You can help. In fact, you should come down to the studio and hang out with us next time, right? I mean, we're looking forward to seeing the types of stuff we can get up to with planks. So for myself, the workshop, and the rest of the techno busters, until next time, bye bye. bye.